You're listening to Barbell Logic, brought to you by Barbell Logic Online Coaching, where each week we take a systematic walk through strength training and the refining power of voluntary hardship. This is the Barbell Logic Podcast. It's eight o'clock in the morning. We're going to record our third episode already. Yeah. Spilled a cup of coffee. And oh, now we're going to talk about productivity. Sixth in the last 12 hours. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good too. Yeah. Let's talk about productivity. We hear about this a lot. Adds value to your life, man. You can be more productive and more efficient. Then you can spend more time doing the things you really love to do. Yeah. Right? Bob Bland that I bought data storage from 20 years ago told me work smart, not hard. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously. And so... One of the things that's been... What do you mean, obviously? You and your Protestant work ethic, you're just like, work no, hard. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I am, that's dead. actually not true at all. No, 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 no. throw no. your life away. Toil. I don't <laughs> actually think that. I do think for most, especially for business owners, you got to pay your dues, and there's going to be some years of probably 70 and 80 hour work weeks, mm-hmm. like every week for several years. And I think eventually you get to the point where it's not that. I know that because at Strong, I got to the point before I sold Strong where I was working about 17 hours a week. Right. Like I was actually up there 17 hours a week. That was it. Mm -hmm. Not very much. You know, 2018, you talked about this. It's kind of been the year of the huge launched enough new things in Barbell Logic. And we got the YouTube channel and the content we're putting out and the coaching academy and all that sort of stuff. And so it's required more work than normal. But all of those things are really firing on all cylinders. And I can see how 19 is becoming kind of be more of a year of optimizing those things. And I don't have to work as many hours. So productivity is something we're always thinking about. Let's start with you. What are some of your daily things that you do? Or do you think about this? I think about this a lot. Like I'm neurotic about it. Do you have things that you do that you go, these are things that are clearly help me be more productive in my business? Yeah. And one of the biggest ones, and this seems obvious, but I find out that it isn't. Is you got to have huge monitors, computer monitors. Yeah. You don't have enough. No, I'm getting ready to go. So my computer monitor is, a, I think it's a 32, but it might I don't be. think it is. It might 20, be. 28, I think it's a 32. 29. I don't know if they sell a 28, 29. Well, here's the problem. I'm not going to go to two. I don't like the idea of two because I don't want the thing in the middle. I don't want the seam running right down the middle of the computer. No, you're thinking about it wrong. So I'm actually going to go to three. Why am I thinking about it wrong? Because you don't just look straight ahead and look at that crack. And, That's and, wrong. And, no. I'm OCD, dude. I can't put shit on the right side and left side. Of course you can. I don't think I can do it. Having two monitors is actually better than one giant one. Is it better than having three monitors? Three might be better than two. That's what I'm saying. I'm going to go to three. I'm going to put one in the middle and then two on each side and the two on each side will angle in towards me. I don't use these Macs, but Windows computers, you know, you can like snap a screen to completely fill the window. Yeah. So if you had one big monitor, it's a little harder. Windows 10, though, will let you slice up a screen in four equal blocks really pretty oh, easily. Cool. You know, I have clients at data storage, you know, where we're, we're trying to help people go paperless and all this. They have one monitor. Yeah. You know, in Windows, they call your computer screen the desktop, right? Right. And so they're trying to do all their work on their digital desktop. Yes. And it's one screen and it's 22 inches across. You yep. just can't do it. Or smaller. It's a laptop and they got a 13-inch right. monitor and they're trying to do everything on it. You need lots of space yep. to work with your digital stuff. And so much of what we do is that. So even if you're home, like, and monitors are dirt cheap dirt now. Cheap. That one right there was, I think, 279 for a 32-inch monitor. A big, beautiful, deluxe, high-resolution monitor for under 300 bucks. So even for at home, guys, even for at home, you know, you're paying your bills at home. You're doing some work from home. Go spend the money and buy two of those monitors and hook that stuff up. I worked for almost a year with just my laptop monitor. Nope. And then I went, what am I doing? Why wouldn't I have a big And I got a big monitor because I kept thinking about how often, think about how often you hit the minimize button. Minimize this window, maximize this window. I never do that anymore. No, I never Just do. open up all the windows and put them across the monitor. You know, Slack's always open. And, you know, I hate it. I get a Slack notification. I have to pull up Slack, then put down Slack. Right now, Slack's just up. It's up in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. I can kind of go to it when I need to, right? I'm breaking down videos on the big monitor. Right. I usually have spreadsheets open on the actual laptop monitor, right? So everything is really smooth. Yeah, I agree. And, That's a huge help. And then you need a dock as well. You need a dock. Like, you don't have one. 
a dock for what? Your What's computer. So, you know, you've got all kinds of peripherals there. You've got you right. know, some speakers, a microphone, you know, you plug it into the power. Maybe you've got two or three monitors and in your laptop dock that acts as the USB hub and the interface. And sometimes they even have like a graphics card in right, the dock. Right, right. Okay. And you just plug your laptop to the dock and then you're live with all of your peripheral stuff. Man, I'm making a note. I'll get that right now. I'll get it before the end of the show. Apple makes great docks that are, you know, peripherals. Yeah. Mine, I use a Targus brand dock for my Windows machine and yep. it's, man, it's fantastic. And anyway, that's a big help. You talked about your Slack notifications. Turn those notifications yep. off. I do. You know, if you use Outlook or whatever, don't have it pull your email that's automatically. Right. You want to pull up your notifications manually so that you're not interrupted by incoming emails, incoming Slack notifications, incoming DMs. So hold on. I think what we should do is since you started with you need a big monitor, mm -hmm. I think let's stay with things you need to buy. Okay, you need a Canon P150 desktop scanner. Why? All of your paper stuff, your bills that come in the, at home, the warranty for the refrigerator you bought, like right. whatever, your receipts, you just run it through that thing and you drop it all in Evernote and you don't have any file folders anywhere. Okay. What's it called? The Canon what? The Canon P150 is the one I used to recommend to people all the time. They may have changed the model numbers. Yeah, so I'll what's that the up. most updated Amazon one is? Yeah. Okay. I like it. Man, those are things that are small yep. and fast and they just never break. Fantastic. You got to have it. Yeah. It's the P215 now. The P215. Yeah. Yeah. The best personal scanner possible. Like if you travel... You could put that one in your backpack that you're getting ready to recommend. Yep. There's one version of it that comes with a little soft with a little software that ties it directly to Evernote. So you scan stuff, it drops it right in there. It's awesome. I think you need a good backpack. I'm a backpack fiend. I've got way too many backpacks. None of which are as good as mine. You're so wrong. It's not listen, people comment on my backpacks every single day. That's right, because mine is undercover and they don't know what they're looking at. So <laughs> you go ahead and talk about your piece of shit and I'll tell them the okay, truth. So I buy backpacks from eBags, eBags.com. They make incredibly smart backpacks. I love them. I love everything they do. They've got a couple really good ones. I'm trying to pull up. Give me a second. I'm going to pull up these exact ones that I have here. eBags, they have a handful. I've got a handful of these. So first off, the two that I like the best, I love the Professional Slim laptop backpack. And the other one that I'm using right now is the Professional Flight laptop backpack, which right now is 89 bucks phenomenal backpack and it's got everything you need in it's got the laptop case it's got pouches for the cords for like your macbook like a hard case that protects those you can put your sunglasses in there if you want to as well anything that might break it's got all the pouches that you need for pens and you know your business cards and your usb stuff all that kind of stuff having a good backpack actually makes me happier because i travel so sure, much sure and i keep all my shit in there and then the other thing that i put in there is i've got a little cord pack pouch satchel folio thing, folio, kind of thing yeah folio thing that's from bag smart i got it on amazon and it holds all my cords you got a micro usb like a usb a yeah. USB all that B, stuff whatever. right and i've got my iphone cords i've got my apple watch cords and i've got the charger backs i've got a hard drive an external hard drive in here i can keep my external battery packs which i get from like anchor you use those two right the mm -hmm. external battery packs are super nice a really nice, good external battery pack you can put in your backpack costs. It's a good external battery pack. It's going to cost like a hundred bucks. A really yeah. nice one. It's going to yeah. be a couple hundred bucks that can actually, you can plug your laptop in the big ones. I can charge my cell phone on my external anchor battery pack about eight or 10 times. Yeah. So it does well. So good backpack, a good place to organize your cords, a good external battery pack. What's the backpack you use? I use the Tom Bean. It's T-O-M-B-I-H-N.com. Okay. I use the Synapse 25. Synapse. There's a smaller one too, like I think the 18. It's 25 is the internal capacity. It's 25 liters. How much is that? 200 bucks? 200 bucks. For years, I carried two laptops. I carried a Mac and a Dell Windows laptop because of my work at data storage. It has, it has what they call a cache in it. You can tell them what model of your laptop is, and they will put a protective sleeve in the bag. It's exactly the right size. It's exactly the right size. Yeah, that's cool. And it's mounted in the bag, so it's not sitting on the bottom of the bag. Right, so, so if you drop, drop bag, it, it right. doesn't hit the yeah. floor. Again, you can mount two of them. And the way they're mounted, you can pull the sleeve out when you go through airport security, but you don't have to take the laptop out of the sleeve. Yes. It slides right out. E-bags the same way. It's got a way that you can just open the bag up and you don't have to take it out. It's TSA. It actually, it's got the tag on it. Yep. It says like TSA approved. Same thing on the e-bags. The laptop doesn't sit on the floor so that if it's dropped, there's kind of a hard 
case underneath it that's protective, that's covered in foam and stuff that protects it as well. And they have so many accessories. They've got a deal like all this snake charmer, you know, for putting all your cables and stuff in. Everything in here can tether as well. So they have file folder pouches, pencil organizer pouches, all that stuff. And they clip them all in with tethers, which is so important. Clip them in with tethers. Yeah. So there's like a little cord for everything that goes in the bag. There's a little cord that is hooked into the bag. So when you're at an airport and you get your cable bag out, your a battery backup out, and your laptop out, you can't walk off and leave them because they're all clipped into the bag. Oh, that's right. I get it. Everything has a place. Nothing can be lost. Everything's snapped in, and there's a place for everything. And it's 25 liters. Is yours in here? Uh, no, it's hanging up in the other room. So if I go on a two- or three-day trip, I can get all my stuff in there. You know, I could put two pairs of pants, a couple shirts, a yeah. pair of underwear, whatever. Man, it's the best bag. The one you carry typically is a little bit smaller than my bag. It's not the, you see the new one I've got there. See those two, they look almost identical. The new one's the professional flight laptop backpack. I just switched, I just upgraded from the executive, the executive laptop backpack from eBags to the flight one that's specifically made for like flying on airplanes all the time. Boy, it's got a big giant, the main pouch is huge. I've got a kind of just a little, like a soft, pack container up in my mm-hmm. clothes in so they're all like in a single like packing kind of cube. cube yeah yep. packing cube and i can put an entire packing cube there i could easily take that backpack for a three-day trip and uh, have everything i need the other thing is you know when i go on seminars i need to bring my training gear right so what i'll do there is i'll still take my small suitcase and then i can put my training gear in the backpack and put my shoes and my belt and my wrist straps and everything i need that's big enough to fit that in plus my laptop so if i'm at the gym you know i can work i can pull my stuff out and train everything I need. So yeah, good backpack is a big deal and you spend good money. I started thinking about the things I use, like you and I are both the same way that we tend to spend money on experiences, not things. But when it comes time to spend money on things, especially the things that we do a lot, you pull the trigger and you spend the good money for the good thing. So you don't replace it ever. Like it's such a buying quality is a big deal. By the time I you know, bought this backpack and all the little accessories I wanted to get all organized and everything. I've got hundreds of dollars in it, but I've had it for like five years. Yeah. It looks brand new. Yeah. It's so good. It's so durable. The bag that you've used and the one I'd use are, I mean, they're probably equivalent. Yeah. I mean, your taste is not very good, but, <laughs> but they probably are, you know. I think mine looks more professional. Yours looks more like a backpack. Right. Yours looks like a college kid's backpack. Probably. Which is fine. I mean, it's not, and then mine looks more like kind of an executive, so it's a little more... An executive know. backpack. Well, it's square. It's <laughs> more square, and it looks less like a... Like, you can turn it sideways and carry it like a briefcase, and it right. kind of can look like a briefcase if you need to. So, I don't know. Yeah, it's a big deal, because, you know, you end up with, like, a bag, and all this shit settles to the bottom of it, and you can't find it, and it doesn't hold what you need. And, you know, we work out of these things all the time, yep. so it's a big helper to have a good bag. And I think either one of those would be good. Another thing that I use all the time is I have noise-canceling headphones. I love them. Yeah. use them all the time. I think that it's a lot of personal preference. I think that that's definitely something you want to spend money on and either get the Bose or the Sony. Those are the two top. And you can get the over-the-ear actual, like, they really, I mean, there's no noise. And it, like, pressurizes the atmosphere on your ear. It's so weird. So that it absolutely just shuts off the frequencies. It really, I mean, if you have a hard time staying focused or you're distracted easily by noise, or you're just annoyed. I'm annoyed by noise, right? So I, I don't have any problem really focusing and getting shit done, but I'm just annoyed by extra noise. People are playing music in the background. Things like that. I'm trying to get work done, especially if I'm traveling. I've got to sit at a coffee shop or like in a hotel lobby or, or whatever then. But they also make the in-the-ear earbuds, and now they have wireless for both like truly wireless, and they both work pretty good. I'll tell you this, they're truly wireless headphones and earbuds So write me if you find one that you like like this. I'll tell you the one place that they don't do very well. And that is if I'm on a phone call, I can hear my person fine. Yeah. But they can't hear me very well because it's truly wireless. The microphone is in your ear. Right. The microphone's out there. So it picks up so much surrounding room noise that they're like, man, it feels like you're in a great big giant room and I can hear all this. So I hate Bluetooth in people's cars. They can hear you fine, but it's just. Yeah. I hate that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about your noise canceling headphones and everything. I've got a set of earplugs that I had made at a gun yeah. range. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Were they like, you know, oh, molded? Sure. 
That's what I use. There's yeah, no battery. Yep. It doesn't go over my head. Yeah. They're tiny. Yeah. And I go down on an airplane and I put those things in. I can't hear anything. Yeah. yeah. Obviously the downside is you can't actually listen to anything. So sometimes I use mine and I listen to podcasts or audiobooks. or sometimes like, honestly, it's just, we've talked about this in previous episodes. There are things where like, I'm not prone to depression at all, but I am prone to some anxiety. You know, I can turn on some music and I can chill out and play some classical music or some Chris Stapleton or whatever. And I like that, especially if there's a tremendous amount of noise and I'm kind of overstimulated. Mm. <laughs> My autism is, is uh, too much sound, too much lights and sound. I can play music in mine and it kind of centers me and calms me back down and I get back to work. And so I've got the over the ear headphones. I have the Sony's, which this year they've beaten out the bows, although you really can't go wrong. They're both tremendous. They're both cost about the same 350 bucks for the headphones are not cheap at all. Yeah. My earplugs were like 18. Yeah. Right. I'm considering going with the, in the ear Part of the problem is if I just work for a long time and I have headphones on my ears, it just, your ears hurt. Yeah, they do. And they sweat and they're hot. I'm hot all the time. And so I know that the noise canceling effect of the earbuds don't work as well as the headphones, but I also think I could wear the earbuds longer and they're a little more comfortable. So I think they're about a hundred dollars cheaper for the earbuds. So they tend to run about two fifty. So. I mean, we've all got phones now. There's timers on your phone. There are calendars in your phone. You know, it wasn't too long ago. You're like, oh, man, you need a Palm Pilot or, oh, man, you need a day timer. <laughs> you know, the things just don't matter as much as they did, I don't think. You know, uh, really effective productivity tools are available to almost everybody now just on your smartphone. Yep. So it's more for me now, it's more about what do you not do? It's, you know, what notifications do you turn off? How often do you put your phone on airplane? Those things are more important now than the things are. Yeah, I agree. So my last thing that I want to just mention, because I love it. If you have a Mac, if you've got an Apple computer, you know, that big charger cord is just a pain in the ass. There's no way to get it. It just takes up a ton of space. I bought something last month called the Sidewinder. You can get it on Amazon. It's 30 bucks. It winds up the cord in a really neat... It's a cord reel. It's just a cord reel. And it also, you don't have to completely unravel the entire cord to use it. So both ends come off the reel. So if the plug-in is close, you can plug it in to the wall and plug it in your computer. I love it. It keeps the cord from being all over my backpack, which I really like. So, okay, that's things. So let's talk about things you can actually do rather than things you can buy. Man, so my deal is the Pomodoro. I love Pomodoro. So Pomodoro's, Pomodoro is the Italian word for tomato. And it was originally called that because when this technique was invented, there's a lots of different people that use techniques like this. I may not call it a Pomodoro, but a Pomodoro was originally called this because you remember the old kitchen timers when we were kids were often in the shape of a tomato. It was kind of cut in half like hemispheres and you could turn them. Twist it. And it would, you know, tick, 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 tick. And so they would set it for 25 minutes. So what you do, I just do it on my phone. Number one. A Pomodoro is a predetermined set amount of time, which is if you stick to the basics of Pomodoro, it's 25 minutes. It doesn't have to be 25 minutes. I like 25 minutes. It works great. Of totally 100% undistracted work. Okay. And so what you do is you start with a list, a prioritized list of things that you need to work on. Sometimes my first Pomodoro is making the list. And so I make the list on Pomodoro. I turn off every notification on my phone and I turn off every notification on my computer. So Slack can't go off, I can't get a phone call, I can't get a text, nothing. Pomodoro, text my wife, even if she's in the same house, and tell my kids, I'm doing a Pomodoro, that means unless the house is burning down, you do not come in here and bother me. And then I have completely undistracted 25 minutes of work, and I sit down and I knock it out. And what I do is I follow a schedule every morning, where, by the way, another thing that you should have that I know you agree with that I really like for productivity is coffee. So I get up every morning, <laughs> make a cup of coffee, and I sit down, and the very first thing I do is I start a Pomodoro, which it doesn't even have to be a Pomodoro for me because it's at 4.30 in the morning. Nobody bothers you at 4.30 in the morning. And I break down my client videos. So even though I'm running this business and we've got Barbara Logic, we're putting out all this content, we're doing all these things, the pipeline that pays the bills and the thing that still keeps me sharp as a coach is coaching. And so before I answer any emails, before I do any business, before I do any like content production, any of that stuff, I sit down and I break down all my client videos every morning, my first Pomodoro or a couple Pomodoros, depending on how many I have to do, I break down videos and I do it completely undistracted. And then the Pomodoro timer goes off. You get five minutes, approximately five minutes as a break. I stand up, I go pee, I get myself another coffee. By the way, you can't do any of that stuff during a Pomodoro. Right. You don't go pee. You don't fill your coffee cup up. You don't go get a drink. You don't check your phone, send a text, nothing. You just do the thing, right? So I'm breaking down client videos. It actually rarely takes me more than one Pomodoro to break down client videos at this point. So I don't have very many clients left. So I've got like 17 and they're not all training on the same day. 
And so usually within 25, 30 minutes, I can break down every single video that I have. And then I take my break and then I come back and I do another Pomodoro and I do all my emails. And what I do with my emails are I go through all my emails that need to be read and responded to. And if it requires a short response, I respond to it. And if it requires a long response, I star it and I don't respond to it. And I knock out all of the emails that I can knock out as quickly as I can. Then at the end of that Pomodoro, I'm just left with a handful, maybe one, maybe two, maybe nine, but not a 20, a handful of emails that require a little longer response. And those are usually actually from leadership. Those are emails from, you know, Nikki Sims or you or whatever about the podcast or content. It's going to take some time. I'll have to sit and think through it and write some stuff up. And then the next Pomodoro, I knock those things out. And then I've done three Pomodoros on average, an hour and a half's worth of work, a little less than an hour and a half's worth of work. And I'm done with the work that must be done every day. Now, some days I'm just done at that point. I don't do anything to expand the business. I'm not working on like vision stuff and mission and core values and where we're going and building new things. And sometimes most days, that's when I go into those things. And so I'm able to do that very undistracted, very focused like, and you know, and in the breaks, if I want to check my text, I can check my text during the breaks. I can make a phone call real quick if I need to. Again, go to the bathroom, make more coffee, make breakfast, come back to another Pomodoro. But during those Pomodoros, man, I'm just doing the thing I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah, I like them very much. The thing I don't like about them is if I'm in the groove, mm -hmm. the thing goes off. You know, it's 25 minutes is up and it's yep. beeping at me. And, and, you know, I was already in the groove. Sometimes they can be disruptive, but, yep. but I actually do that as well. I'm a big proponent of um, David Allen's Getting Things Done yeah, method. Yeah, great book. And one of the rules, like if you read that book and you only get this idea from it, it was worth doing it. He says there are a lot of things that take, I think it's less than three minutes to do. Yep. And he says it takes about three minutes to decide to not do it. Yep. He says it takes about three minutes to put it off. And so if it's something that takes three minutes, just go ahead and do it. That's right. Because you'll lose time in putting it off. Yep. If you're like, I don't have time right now. Yeah, you go ahead because you're not going to have time later either, actually. Yep. Which is really what I'm doing with those emails, right? That's right. When I go through, right. I'm doing all the three-minute emails first. Yep. And then I come back to the longer ones. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff like that out there that you just got to do it right there. And then he also has a really good method for you know figuring out what's most important yep. and helping you prioritize what you need to do. He's got good rules for telling you how to create to-do lists. Like your to-do list should be tasks only because people often put something on their to-do list like, write out our core values. Well, that's not a task. Right. That's not a task. And that's something that would be on your list for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. And you would never get to, it's a project really. That's right. So he's like, you know, discern what's a project and what's a task. When you identify your most important projects, then you can cut those up into actual tasks. Task. Yeah. And then that's what actually goes on your list. So when you say, okay, I'm going to do a Pomodoro, your Pomodoro is composed of tasks. Right. If you approach your Pomodoro in terms of a project, you're probably going to spin your wheels because as we do more and more complex work and we become more and more effective people, our projects get to be hairier Yep. and you just can't do a project in 25 minutes. That's right. So David Allen's getting things done is super important. I agree. I use it less and less. I should probably reread that. Well, I like the idea of, he says, do the fast things first, which by the way is very gratifying. So yeah. you can knock out in the first Pomodoro, you can often knock out 20 things off of the to-do list that were all like little three minute things. Maybe you don't even have to write those down. They're just, they're the tiny little things, but you get all of those knocked out of the way. If I look at a to-do list and there's 50 things on it, it's overwhelming. Right. So if the very first Pomodoro, I can knock out 20 of those with all the short time sort of things. Like now I've really pared down that list. Where do you keep your list? Often it's actually on my notepad on my phone at this point. I still write them down a lot. Nikki Sims always writes hers down. She I think you should always write them down. I do too. I think it's actually better. So this is one of those things that like, it's probably a do as I say, not as I do. I do like writing them down better. Mine's not in here. I write it on a little yellow pad, notepad, and I buy, you know, a bundle of 25 of them or whatever at Sam's. And I think they're eight and a half by five or five and a half yeah, by eight inches. Half, or yeah. They look like a legal pad, but they're little. But they're half size. Yep. And I put a binder clip on the bottom edge so that the pages don't curl up. Okay. <laughs> and I carry it with me everywhere I go. And that's my to-do list. I don't put it on my phone because I don't want to have any reason to pick my phone up. Absolutely. I totally get it. And then I also like to draw a line through the thing I finished. I yeah. think it's good. That's my little... I have thought about, you know, Brett, this is one of the things I wish I would have done the last 10 years, that Brett McKay is big about uh, journals or journaling. Now, not the way we think about journaling. Like, I don't... I don't have time to sit down and do your diary stuff for an hour at the end of every day. Mm -hmm. But if I put my to-do list every day, like on a moleskin notebook, instead of like the one you're using, 
and just every day dated it and put the to-do list and marked it off and then just added a few additional notes. How cool would it be to have gone back 10 years, yeah. you know, later and look at what you were doing 10 years ago and say like, oh, well that here on this day, 10 years ago, this is what I was doing. And you can go back and kind of reminisce, like this is what was going on in the business. And this is, you know, those things would have been nice. So I'd like to get to the point where I'm doing that. And I just get up every morning. And the very first thing I do is make the list in the Moleskin notebook. And then, right. And then you just cross it out where you can still read the thing. Yep. Just draw one line through it. Yep. Imagine giving that to your grandkids. You know, or imagine if you had that from your they grandpa. They won't be able to read. <laughs> you know, 10 years from now, nobody under 20 will be able to read cursive. Right. You know, Kinsley, my youngest, is learning cursive because she just wanted to. Just, mm -hmm. We're teaching her cursive. It's just one of those deals. Kinsley is just turned eight. And she's really smart with math. And she's always been a little bit behind on reading. This year, she's just fallen in love with reading. So her reading's just taken off this year, right? So we homeschool our kids. And so she's kind of way ahead of where she would be in public school with math and science. And she's probably a little bit behind where she would be in public school with, yep. with reading, which doesn't matter. You know, we're teaching to her skills. And she's fallen in love with reading. And again, because we don't squelch learning, she's fallen in love with, with reading. And so she just decided this year, she's like, I want to learn cursive. Like, okay, cool. Let's do it. Let's right. learn. And so she loves it. She learns cursive and writes in cursive and it's so pretty. And it's just, but yeah, I can write in cursive. And my wife has told me before she wishes I wrote in cursive more often because I've got really kind of perfect. I'm very yeah. I'm a perfectionist with that kind you of stuff. You dot your eyes with a circle. So and I don't like dot my eyes with girl. a circle. I do not do that. But because I went into architecture, I've printed my whole life. Right. I've always printed everything. You know, I print. And not only that, I write in all capitals. I've also read and heard that the people alive today are probably the last people that will be able to read Shakespeare without translation. Really? Yeah, language has changed so much. It's terrible. It is terrible. But the getting things done deal, he talks about emptying your head. Like don't yes. carry your tasks and your projects in your head. That's right. Because then you're not clear. That's why they have to be on paper. That's right. So he says, put them all on paper. He actually says, put them all on one sheet of paper. You remember that? Like, yep. He's actually not into a task list. He's like, put yep. them in one sheet of paper. And he has, you know, this 30,000 foot view down to like what's right in your face. And then another important idea that he has is creating a someday maybe list. Yep. Like there are things that we think would be worth doing, but we can't do them right now, or maybe right now it's not appropriate. And keeping a someday maybe list is a really good thing to kind of empty your head because there's stuff that we all want to work on, but we just can't get to it right now, or maybe not everything's right. And being able to put those someday maybe, those important projects that aren't timely, somewhere safe, so they don't have to rent space in your head yep. is a really good productivity tip. You know, a lot of people are overwhelmed with the things they need to do. That's right. And then, you know, I don't know if he does this anymore, but you used to be able to hire David Allen to either he would come to you or send somebody on his team to you and they would help you download is what he called it and yep. get everything out of your head. Yep. And a lot of people that are overwhelmed with the work in front of them are carrying every potential valuable thing they could do yes. in their head at every single minute of their life. And man, there's a <laughs> almost like a, I don't know. There's like almost a counseling and psychology oh, element sure. to it. You know, if I could get all of those things that are weighing yeah. on you out and then free you up to like throw yourself at the most important thing while well, you're that much more effective. Yeah. I think that's why a lot of times my notes end up on my phone because at nighttime, I don't typically have trouble sleeping, but there are times at night when I'm laying in bed and there's all this shit going through my head. Like I need to do this tomorrow. I need to do this tomorrow. They don't have a notebook sitting there. And it's kind of hard to write while you're laying on your back in bed. I can grab my phone and I'll do this frequently where I'll just kind of start the to-do list tonight, right. the night before, and I'll put some stuff on the notepad on the phone and then I can I don't have to like hold it in my brain right. and be like, oh, I need to make sure I remember this tomorrow when I wake up. Like, Got to get rid of it. That's anxiety inducing, right? And man, we are, gosh, we're such an anxiety laden culture at this point. You know, and I'm certainly no different. I struggle with the same thing. So yeah, getting this stuff out of my head has been a big deal for me. More about notes. Evernote. You don't use Evernote. I don't. You think I should? Yes. Got to convert. Yes. Sell me on it. Evernote is a cloud-based, it's not really document management. Maybe it's content management. I don't know exactly what you would say it is. But it's like an online notebook system. So you can create an account and then you can create notebooks and then you can put notes in the notebooks. And so why do I want to do that instead of a moleskin notebook? Well, I think you probably want a moleskin notebook, but like you can email things to Evernote and then they're in there. If you're on an airplane and you have a someday maybe idea, you can email that someday maybe idea to your someday maybe notebook and then it's there and you don't have to think about it anymore. And then when you're right. like, okay, I got a little time, it's Sunday morning. I'm going to look at my someday maybes. It'll be there and you don't have to go flip okay. back through the notebook. I think moleskins or other paper notebooks are really important, but not for everything. 
Yeah, so it's almost like the Moleskine notebook is good for today. It's good for today. Evernote's kind of good for the overview, more like a 30,000 foot view of like, okay, I can put things in the different sort of categories of big picture ideas of what we're trying to do. It's completely searchable. You can store anything in it. So you can put Word documents, you can put PDFs, you can put photos, you can put anything in it. Okay. And you can tag them all. And you can create a tagging system. Yeah. And you can nest the tags up. So I have a data storage notebook, a bank statements tag, a date tag. So I know, oh, here are all my 2018 bank statements for data storage by doing a couple clicks. Boom, they're all right there. So you scan the stuff. The stuff you're just telling me to scan, you then throw that in your Evernote stuff? Threw, uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe not all of it, but a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. If it's not, you know, some sort of, you know, security risk, you know, yeah, I'll put those things in there. If you use the David Allen thing, you have to-dos, you have someday maybes, you have agendas. Like, okay, next time I talk to Matt, I want to bring this up. So I'll have a Matt note that is tagged agenda. So I know that, okay, I'm going to talk to Matt. I can click on that tag. Boom. There are the things that I said we needed to talk about next time. So you can tag things. And then they're globally searchable too. So you can click search. And you can search for an account number. And if it's inside the bank statement that you filed away two and a half years ago, it'll pop up on your screen. Mm, okay. And then it syncs across your phone, your laptop, your right, iPad, everything. everything. If you're in South America and you go to an internet cafe, you can log in. There's a web interface and find your stuff. It's super powerful. I wonder if it's truly, there's probably some offline capabilities too. Like if you're on an airplane, you can oh, put yeah. it on your, and then when you get internet capability, it uploads it. Yeah, later, you, can, you can set it to have right. offline copies. I've learned a lot. I'm going to do it. So I'm going to get a doc for my laptop, Canon P215 document scanner, and I'm going to start using Evernote. Yeah, I love it. Evernote's so powerful. I used OneNote for a number of years, which is the Microsoft product. Evernote is superior. Like I said, you can email to it. You can just drag and drop stuff in there. I have it on my phone so I can open it up and add stuff in there. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't journal there. I don't use it to you yeah. know, create content there. No, but it's a place to organize it's kind of a, pers a personal filing and, system. Yeah, it's just a personal, it's a digital filing system. So everything I have is in there. I mean, you know, I've got my lab results from four years ago. And so the doctor's like, well, I don't know. I can pull it up and email it to him immediately. Right. You know, and he supposedly has an EMR. He doesn't know. He doesn't have anything. You know, so, or he certainly doesn't have any of my medical records from another physician right. or specialist. Probably or won't go through the time to ever get those. So I've got all that stuff right at my fingertips. You know, my kids' transcripts. I mean, wow. everything. All right. You know, we're getting ready to go to Tucson. Hotel reservations are in there. Everything's so this might in also there. be good, like for our chief administrator, Nikki Berman, who maybe already uses this thing. So we could put like all our tax files and like. Yeah, it could be a shared notebook. You can see it. She but can like, see it. Yeah. So a, a new staff member comes on and they send us like their bio, their NDA, all the contracts, all this stuff like that. We could all put that and there could be a file on Scott Hambrick. Mm -hmm. Here's all Scott Hambrick's like paperwork. Yeah. I don't know what Evernote's terms and conditions representations are about like privacy. Yeah. Privacy or and safety sort of social stuff. security numbers or something like that. But you can encrypt them and drop them in there. I got a bunch of stuff I've encrypted and dropped. Okay. In. Got it. And then you can share, you know, Charity and I have a bunch of shared notebooks. So like, our, you know. Tax stuff, health stuff, stuff about the kids. So she can pull it up on her phone. I can pull it up on my phone. We both got it. And it's cool. Evernote's okay. huge. I'm in. You know, I've owned a small business for years. I used to have horizontal, you know, a filing cabinet. Yeah. You know, in my office. Like there's literally no full. reason for that anymore. No, just not. I mean, there's some stuff that you want to keep, you know, but, you know, Evernote has replaced most of that. Yeah. And it's free for, I mean, I've got the, you know, I don't know, I pay $100 a year for the kind of upsell version that sure. Charity and I use but it's super powerful. Yeah, cool. Well, that's good. Anything else? Well, I mean, no, that's enough. I mean, and Evernote's been around a long time and they haven't sold out. <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't think anybody's bought them. They haven't been acquired. They've stayed on point. They've stayed, you know, they've never started like advertising. You know, there's never been an ad pop-up come up on it. You know, it's just great. Yeah. Something that I did not too long ago that was interesting was downloaded several different apps on my phone let me see if I have any left on here. I've got rid of them all. But there are several. You can go look them up. I don't necessarily have any recommendations about specific ones. But they log your phone usage. And so at the end of the day or the end of a week, you can, uh, you see can pull up a report. how much time we on Instagram and stuff. How much on email, how much on Instagram, all that kind of stuff. And you'll be disgusted. You sure. won't believe how much time you look on your phone. I'm not a real phone-heavy guy. But I was doing like three hours, 50 minutes a day with the thing. And that's not all right. Okay. Evernote. I'm getting it right now. Yeah, Evernote's so good. Awesome. That's probably a wrap. I mean, look, the overarching theme is this. Buy good things that you'll use that will make your life easier and more productive, right? So we do that with our 
way we use our computers, our monitors, our, you know, like our cord sharing system, our, I mean, our cord storage, our backpacks, scanners, things like that, that like just make everything smoother and easier. And then learn how to work in completely undistracted ways. Right. right. That's really the big deal. So have a good system for like task lists, whether that's in a Moleskine notebook or Evernote or your whatever somewhere, and then be able to just conquer that work in a very undistracted, can't pick up your phone. Your phone's got to be on do not disturb mode or completely off. You've got to have your notifications completely. First off, you should never have Facebook notifications, Instagram notifications. Like that should never be turned if on. If you don't have to purchase advertising on Facebook, delete your account. That's right. That's right. It's exactly right. The only reason I have a Facebook account is because I have to buy advertising from those people. Right. It's for business, right? Which I still never use it personally. I haven't looked at Facebook. I haven't pulled up Facebook and scrolled through Facebook in probably three years. Right. I mean, I will not do it. And I'm really close. So follow us on Facebook. I'm really close to getting rid of Instagram. Yeah. I'm about, oh, I'm so close. Because, so I've got, I don't know how many followers I've got. We're 8,000 or something for Reynolds Strong for my personal Instagram. I'm kind of getting to the point where like, I don't really need people to see all my personal stuff on Instagram. Don't care. And Barbell Logic is going to pass me up in the next few months and followers. Mm -hmm. And we have people that run those accounts. I don't run those accounts. And so like originally I was there because Reynolds Strong was also my business. It was business and me. Well, now it's just me, right? So it's me training or it's me drinking whiskey or eating sushi or all the crap nobody actually cares about. And uh, I keep thinking about, is there anything on Instagram that brings me value? Like, do I look at Instagram and derive any value out of Instagram? Yeah. The answer is, mm, nope, I don't think so. There's some stuff I get some value from, actually, but it's not the only place I could get it. You know, the damn thing is designed, I mean, all social media stuff is ultimately designed to monopolize your attention, and that ain't okay. Yeah, not when we have stuff to do. More productivity stuff, and this kind of goes without saying, but here's an example of the opposite of that. A lawnmower that doesn't start. Sure. You know, if you've got anything in your life that doesn't work as soon as you can, you've got to replace that stuff, right. upgrade it, and get away from this. Or hire it out, right? We got to the hire point it out. it's the same sort of thing. Man, I ran business for a long time and continued to mow my own lawn. Yeah. And part of it was because I actually, there's in the springtime, I actually enjoy mowing my lawn. There's something cathartic about like going out, like when the weather's still nice, you now I get it. But when it's 72 degrees outside, I'm like, it's beautiful. It kind of stops me from like actually like work working. You know what it is? And some of it is some nostalgia there. The property we lived on was between three and five acres. We mowed between three and five acres, depending on like what year it was. So of course, in a big riding lawnmower. I used to go out and turn on like Cardinal ball games. I'd listen to the St. Louis Cardinals in my, in my wireless headset Mm -hmm. radio, you know, with the big giant thing. And I would listen to Cardinal ball games and listen and just chill. And it would just be like, it was a relaxing sort of thing. And so in May I would mow or April, I would mow in Springfield, even owning business. I'd be like, I kind of enjoy this. And it takes me less than an hour to mow my lawn. And then it would be July. And I'd be like, what the hell am I doing? Mow my lawn, you know? And so I hired that out five years ago, six years ago. So I haven't mowed my lawn since, never will again. But yeah, God, something doesn't work. What are you doing? It's been so hard for me to get out of this sort of do-it-yourself DIY mindset. I'm really stingy, you know, and if you're like, man, you know, I'm going to pay that guy $45 to mow. He can mow my little city lot in 31 minutes. You know, I'm like, man, I'm paying that guy 89 bucks an hour. Yeah. Yeah, pay him. Yeah, because you, you have can't some, mow it in 31 minutes. I can't mow it, it in 31 you minutes. It takes an hour or more, and you're worth more than... You drag your equipment out, That's you right. mow, then you shower, et cetera, yep. et cetera. Yep. It takes you more than 31 minutes. And then you can't really compare what you think your hourly rate is to what the tradesman's hourly rate is, because there's something on your someday maybe list that's extraordinarily valuable that you can't get to because right. you're pushing the mower. That's right. It comes back to that. The urgent is the enemy of the important, right? Yeah. So the urgent is, well, my grass is really tall and I got to mow or the HOA is going to get me in trouble. Right. Well, or you could have just paid somebody to do that and you could have worked on the thing that was actually more important, which might be just sitting down and spending time with your family or on the someday maybe list or like doing the thing that expands the business or like working on your 401k or your investments for things that actually matter. Right. Like that kind of stuff. And then there are things like doing anything on the roof. Right. Anything. No. I would, no. Because it's too risky. I fall. I break something. I'm done. Yeah. Everything shuts down. No. So, I mean, there's certain things that if it's risky at all, I ain't doing it because I, you know, I don't need to get the flu. I don't need a broken bone, you know, stuff on ladders, all that stuff. I don't do it anymore. I can't do it. The someday maybe in getting to those things or that's where the real improvements in our income and the real improvements in our life are yep. is in those someday maybe. They're never urgent. 
but they're the most important. Yeah. That's the thing. What does productivity look like? People that listen to this are going to hate this. It's going to make me sound like a jerk. What does it look like if you have a job and like tasks come to you and people are like, this is what you're supposed to do? Because I've never had that. I don't know what that is. Yeah. I mean, I did. If I thought of productivity back when I was a teacher, I wouldn't have applied it to the teaching piece. Right. How can you do that? Well, but even if I was just, you know, making widgets or whatever, like I still probably wouldn't have considered my own productivity and making widgets, even though that's probably a, a pretty good thing to do to help right. you climb that corporate ladder. I just wasn't wired to climb the corporate ladder. So it would be more about the idea of like, what are the other things I need to accomplish outside of life? Like I can remember, man, you remember this. Like there was a time when I'm working a full-time job. My wife is working a full-time job. Most of our listeners are listening to this, especially if they're guys, their wives are working full-time jobs. Dude, that's hard. Yep. So now productivity actually matters to them as well, like just in a slightly different way. Like how do you get the laundry done? Mm -hmm. How do you make sure your house stays clean? Like how do you make sure the kids get their homework done at night and you spend some family time? Like, well, that's hard when everybody's out of the house from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. every single night. Like that's really difficult. And so I'd never want to forget that we are lucky, blessed, whatever you want to call it, that we live a life where we get to, you know, mostly work from home. Our wives get to stay home. They get to homeschool our kids. Our kids are home or with our family. Like, but that's come on the back of a lot of 80 hour weeks to be able to get there to that point. Right. So that's the key. Yeah. And the, being able to do the kinds of things that you want to do are born out of the someday maybes. That's right. That's right. That was my most frustrating thing. And I did for a couple of years, I did business mentorship with guys that ran gyms a lot of times. And I was constantly trying to get them to do the someday maybes. Yeah. And most of them just won't do it. Yep. And it's really, it's a won't, right? Like a lot of them didn't run their business very well to the point that they were putting out fires all the time, but it comes down to that same thing. Like, isn't that really what training is for a lot of people? That's what exercise and training is. It's a someday maybe thing right. for a lot of people. And they just never do it because they just never prioritize it. Well, look, man, if you actually want to expand the business, you got to get to the point where you can do these things, right? There are a lot of people that are doing these businesses that are still scrubbing toilets 10 years later. Right. So you own your own business, you're still scrubbing toilets 10 years later. You're doing it wrong. Right. You shouldn't be scrubbing toilets. Well, there's no way to not scrub toilets unless you eventually do a someday maybe, which is to write a system for somebody else to scrub the toilet. Right. But writing the system for somebody else to scrub the toilet is never urgent. Right. But it's real important. Really important. Right. So. Well, I know that you guys didn't come to the podcast for the productivity stuff. You came from the barbells, but we hope you stay for the other things. We think that you're going to have to get more productive to make time to go train. Right. Man, I've been working too much and haven't been able to train in the last 12 days. And that's on me. I've got to clean it up so that I can take care of myself so I can be stronger and live longer and live better. Hope you guys are all able to live better. Let us know if we can do anything for you. Go to podcast at barbell-logic.com and drop us a line and go to barbell-logic.com and sign up for the Friday fives and get a newsletter. There's productivity stuff in there, barbell training tips, programming talk, all things strength. We'll make it worth the email that you give us. Thanks for listening. 